Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Good afternoon and welcome to the Global Report. I'm your host, Lily Ong. We have with us today Dr. Alex Kuznetsov, who is here in Singapore running his business. We're first going to be talking about how he got to Singapore. Welcome to the show, Dr. Alex. Thank you. Now, Dr. Alex, um, how long have you been in Singapore? Five years. Five years. And where are you from originally? From Moscow. From Moscow. How did you end up in Singapore from Moscow? Because, because I have five kids. I'm grandfather already. Oh. So, and four of them are younger. Okay. And uh, How young is younger? From six to thirteen. Six to thirteen. And Singapore is the safest place in the world. Mm. That's why we choose from Hong Kong, Canada, and Singapore. And choose Singapore. Did you experience living in those places or you were just comparing uh, virtually? We traveled a we little travel. bit mm -hmm. and then choose Singapore. With your kids, with your yeah. kids. So you came to Singapore because of this it's safety? Safety and a very kind nation. nation. Mm. You know, in Singapore they measure the kindness index. No, no. Oh, they do that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they officially, uh -huh. every month. Mm -hmm. So they ask, the, like a poll, they ask people some uh -huh. questions. How many, many, like, uh, how many people you helped this last week? Uh -huh. How many people helped you? Is that done by the government or? Yeah, by the government. Really? Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't even know that. I was, I was surprised. Yeah. And uh, I'm crazy about education. And uh -huh. Singapore also crazy about education. Smart nation. Uh -huh. you know? the, the slogan is smart nation. Right. So now, when you say smart nation, what what do you mean by that in terms of technology? It means uh, they cherish the brains. The, 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 the try to uh, uh, create the environment mm -hmm. for the best education in the world. You mm -hmm. know, Singapore system, the Singapore math mm -hmm. is the best in the world, number one. So did you hear about Singapore education back when you were in Moscow? Yes, I studied a lot of education system and I chose Singapore. This was one of the factors I chose Singapore for. And what did you find attractive about the Singapore education system? Was it because of the high ranking on the OECD, on the PISA scores, or was it something else? I will tell you, honestly, the first factor for me was the safety and kind nation. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want my kids to be brought up in Russia. Mm. Very aggressive. Mm. <laughs> so I want them to, to be kind, courage, and uh, open, rather key people smiling mm -hmm. in the office. And what, what jumped out at you about the Singapore education system, uh, besides Singapore math? Um, because I'm a mathematician, mm -hmm. math is number one for me. Mm -hmm. So, very effective. And uh, I teach my kids also in my school, I have school international. I set up international school already here. Mm. And we use a lot of from Singapore math. Then team building. Singapore is number one also for team building, mm -hmm. you know. There are also international Olympia in team building, so uh, every, every nation t uh, has a team and they have a question to solve and problem to solve mm -hmm. as a team, mm -hmm. difficult and in real world problem. And uh, uh, they have some days to solve in Singapore, number one. Also. Yeah, I, I can <laughs> agree with that because the Singapore government is probably one of the most integrated government in the world that I've yeah. seen. You know, um, no, no department works on its own. Even the, in terms of education system, um, it's always, the curriculum is always designed according to the manpower needs. Yeah. So, you know, it is very relevant, depends on, so you know, what's, what's is needed 10 years from demands. now. Yeah, right, yeah. right. And if something's not in demand, they start to, yeah. to phase it yeah. out, yeah. That's why they uh, encourage students not to go to university. Only 25% go to university. And the rest go to the poly, polytechnical, mm. to uh, meet the uh, requirement of the real life. The technical needs, yeah. the vocational needs, yeah. right. Yeah, that, That's another area that I think Singapore has done well, is that um, mm. we don't just nurture those that are academically inclined. Yeah. Yeah. Um, those that are not academically inclined, but then who are technically inclined, we make sure we you know, help them to reach their potential as and well. And they show that this a students, uh, in person with polytech, polytechnical education, they're not just inferior, in, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah? Because everywhere in the world, if you go to university, it's like a higher standard 
position, and uh, Singapore no. Well, you know, doesn't feel ashamed. That's interesting. You, you mentioned that because Singapore used to be like that. Um, they used to, the the people used to um look upon uh, the university grads as you know more prestigious and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and the government worked really hard to change the image. Yeah. They they launched a very uh, a very um nationwide campaign mm. to adjust the image that people have of technical ed because and your. Tr I also ask them. They say, uh, I say, why you go to your poly? Why don't you go? You're so smart. You go to university. I like this. I don't like. I don't want to go. It's it, uh, this uh, uh, university graduation is not the thing. It's in itself for me. Mm -hmm. For example, I like drawing, creating ca cartoons, or like um, I want to be a pilot or like aircraft engineer. Mm -hmm. And you go to that. I go uh, trade to school. Yeah. Trade school. Yeah. yeah. And then you're not ashamed of this. Because I like what the use of university for me. Mm. <laughs> yeah, here whether it's technical education or academic mm. education, both of them are highly prized. Mm. And I think it's because you know Singapore is not like Russia. We don't have oil. We don't have any natural resources. So we only have people, and those are our you know what, what we call our human capital, our also only resources. resource. <laughs> our natural resources. Yeah, this, it's our one and only natural resources, and it's the only thing that that mm. we can capitalize on. Now you mentioned you have. Five kids. Yeah. And what are what are their ages again? Uh, from six mm -hmm. to twenty one. Six 21 to twenty one. Elder daughter already gave birth to my grandson. And and so your congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. So um, was your you came here five years ago? So your son was only five when oh no one year old yeah, when you came yeah, out very here. Young. And the he, rest were kind of in the. He Russia. He say, mm. I am father. I am Chinese girl, uh, boy. <laughs> I'm English boy or I'm Russian boy <laughs> because he has a lot of teachers in my school. Uh -huh. He cannot decide. <laughs> what about the other three kids? Are they boys too? Yeah. So the other three kids that came here, how was the adjustment? I mean, this is very different from Moscow. Um, when I came here, I uh, rented the largest condo in mm -hmm. Singapore. I thought a lot of units, mm -hmm. they, they can meet friends there and play uh -huh. together. But everybody studying and working, nobody, <laughs> and very right. hot. Uh -huh, it's very <laughs> so hot. Empty space outside. So they socialize in my school now. So that's why mm -hmm. I created the international school. They have right. a lot of friends now. Mm -hmm. And we have a scholarly ambience here. Mm -hmm. So they all uh, support each other, uh, reaching some milestones. It's like the, the environment is everything when you, when you bring up each other. So, how long ago did you start your own school? Uh, actually, I started. I just came and started. For, oh, well, but I started tuition. Okay. So gradually, the school became international school. Now we have a license for international school, and we are moving to another place. I see. Uh, so when you first came, um, you you started your own business pretty quickly. Yeah, very fast because my son mm -hmm. because my son was a champion in math, and nobody can could believe that he finished. His O level, it's IGCC, it's like O level. And that's the, the one that the Cambridge examination you're yeah, talking at about. Nine years old. Mm. And everybody was shook. And the hundreds of students come here. So in four months, I didn't have place already. <laughs> now, what was the subject um, that he, he um, studied, that he took the test in? For it's IGC, levels? International Mathematics. International and now Mathematics. He, by the age of 11, he finished physics and chemistry also, both A star. For all levels? Yes. For it's all levels. International mathematics, a little bit, uh, IGCC means mm -hmm. a little bit higher standard than all levels. Mm -hmm. With IGCC, you can go to the most universities in mm -hmm. the world, 90%. So, how did you prepare him for that? I assume that you were the one that prepared him to. to I have to a lot of tricks and <laughs> secrets, so okay. I, will, I will share with you some of them. Mm -hmm. First of all, my goal is not academic results. Mm -hmm. And not speed learning is not the, the, the most important thing. The most important thing is independence. Independence. So I teach them to read books. Because some kids, they take books and say, oh, teacher didn't explain. I don't know. But uh, our kids, not only my, my, my kids, in my school, they always try to deal with uncertainty. It's the, uh, the most valuable courage is to deal with uncertainty. If you, if you don't know how you try, and most kids don't try. This, this, this so to develop a, a curious mind, a, a curious quiz, mind, an ability, an ability to uh, read and learn himself. 
Mm. That's the most important thing. So I teach him how to deal with different sorts of information, mm. how to set up the environment, learning environment for him. Mm. So now he, I, I don't teach already. They, ha- they teach already. Mm. <laughs> they own money already. They teach other students. Wow. And uh, when my nine years old son, third one, mm-hmm. he's uh, studying secondary three, it's like grade 11. Right. And this uh, is the nine year old uh, studying uh, yeah, three work. This is okay. He's writing, and students come here and say, Oh, sec three, oh, how could it be? Oh. And he's sitting quietly in the corner and, and learn something. Is solely. that mathematics? Is that mathematics uh, or other subjects? subjects? All, all subjects. subjects. Yeah, chemistry, physics. Uh-huh. He is nine years old. He's mm-hmm. preparing for all level already in chemistry, physics, and mathematics simultaneously. And Chinese also. They all learn Chinese. Mm. So, uh, Did they learn Chinese came. at school? Yes, very, yeah, after school. Also. After because school. my teachers from school do tuitions after school mm-hmm. and my kids are with me. <laughs> so your kids go to school here full time? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they don't attend other local schools? They no, don't attend yeah, we have international schools. So they learned their Chinese Everything, here yeah. as well? Yes, and uh, it's pretty hard for, for them, especially for elder ones. Because mm, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But for younger ones, it's easy. Because you know, before six we have a window open yes. for languages. Yeah. So he likes it. That's why he said, oh, maybe I Chinese boy. <laughs> That's fantastic. Now, now tell us about your wife. I'm, I'm sure she's just as she, proud of you as, as your son. She's so what a does she do? Drama, drama director. Mm-hmm. So she learns, still learning in Russia. Mm-hmm. Go there, here and there. Oh, she flies back and forth. Okay. And uh, uh, she's running in the drama theater. They, they have a two performance, mm-hmm. prepare two stage performance a year. Oh. So and kids sewing his costumes. Wow. Uh, and, uh, doing everything, uh, wow. shadow theater, so a lot of speech and dra- speech uh, trainings. Uh-huh. So some parents are very uh, satisfied because uh, some kids uh, cannot articulate correctly in mm-hmm. their languages. Mm-hmm. The problem is in, in Singapore, especially with younger kids, they forget Russian mm. <laughs> and they, they, they speak, speak English or right. Chinese. Right, also English. And, uh, yeah, and, and, uh, yeah, the, uh, parents uh, wants to save the language, the native language, mm-hmm. and they start going to my wife's theater mm-hmm. and improve their language. So, in your wife's uh, theater class, everything is conducted in Russian. In Russian, but now she's expanding because other students from my school, international mm-hmm. school, mm-hmm. Americans, Indonesians, they mm-hmm. they go there, see, oh, I, we want also to join, mm-hmm. and she's hiring you. Oh, stuff. that's wonderful. Yeah. Wow, that's wonderful. Well, um, so, well, since your kids are primarily in your school, do they interact with others, with, with kids outside of your school? Do they have friends outside of school? Yes, yes, because in Singapore, very small. Mm. A lot of density population, right. dense population. So, in, in condors, uh, my sons go to, uh, like, sport clubs, mm-hmm. like Aikido clubs. Mm-hmm. Or uh, boxing, mm-hmm. uh, they interact there. We live, uh, we stay, and there's a very small, cozy condo. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows everyone. Oh, wonderful. So, so like a small family. Mm-hmm. Now, what is your biggest challenge uh, living in Singapore? I, I know uh, you have raised a lot of work. A lot of a lot Everybody of works hard here. A lot of work. <laughs> okay. yeah, I work 24 hours a day. Right, just stress. about. And I work, and uh, I have four kids. Mm-hmm. Very tough because. My, I, I'm in Singapore for them. Mm. I actually live for them mm. <laughs> and created the school for them also. Right. So that's why uh, I uh, try to understand deeper what they're doing every day, mm-hmm. what's the problem, we discuss this problem, don't have time. A lot mm. of kids, and I want to be a father for everyone. Well, you're an amazingly <laughs> dedicated father, and you're sh- I'm sure your wife is, is a dedicated mm-hmm. mother too. Now, um, I understand that you have a master's in child psychology as yeah, well. I'm PhD in math. And PhD in math and, and master in child psychology child and I'm pediatrician also. And pediatrician. Pediatrician. Yeah, so I have oh. I have four education and economics. So I actually all oh my, my life I study I study speed learning, oh. so that's why I test in myself. <laughs> Are you sure you're not here as a spy? Because you are so well versed in so many different areas. Because I, I, my major is actually my main skill interest is speed learning, accelerated learning, the techniques uh-huh. how we learn faster. I see. That's why I learn. I, if I if I want to know something new, I learn 
Christ I know how. And I teach my kids and I teach my students also in my school. Do you do speed reading too? Is that such a thing? Speed reading is just a small part of speed learning. Mm. Speed reading is very important also. Right. Do you know the number one rule for speed reading? Number one rule? Yeah, don't read u- useless books. Don't read useless books. But how would you know the book is useless before you start reading it? That's why you use number two for spring reading and number three, you, you look at the content very fast and see, oh, this is uh-huh. useless. Oh, okay. Well, that's a very useful tip. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Dr. Alex. We're going to take a little short break here and then when okay. we come back, we're going to okay. talk more about your business here. Okay. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. everyone, I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Hey, aloha everybody. Thanks for joining us on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Andrew Lanning, the security guy. I host a program called Security Matters Hawaii. And I hope you'll join us on Fridays. Uh, We air at 10 a.m. And we're gonna be talking about those security things that really should be important to you. And, you know, maybe get behind the scenes on some, some things that you may not know about the industry or about products or even about your habits. Um, Security is all about people, processes, and products, and we hope to bring that to you in an informative and um, hopefully a useful way. So again, 10 10 a.m. on Fridays, Security Matters Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii. Join me. Thank you. Welcome back to the show, Dr. Alex. Now, Dr. Alex, so soon after you got to Singapore, you started a business. I'd like to learn more about this business that you started. You mentioned that it's an international school. Seven, before I started international school, I started tuition, tuition, Mm -hmm. tuition. And when you say tuition, is that like supplementary classes for after yeah. school lessons? Seven out of ten Singaporean kids go to tuition. It's a culture. Mm-hmm. From school you go to tuition because okay. very high standard, difficult, and they need support. And then I created like a personalized approach. Mm-hmm. And I had before... Just, just to interrupt you mm-hmm. there, is there something you found out before you moved to Singapore? You always knew that you were going to come to Singapore and set up a tuition yeah. center. Be- because I'm a child psychologist and I'm interested in specialized in education mm-hmm. and, s- and accelerated learning, I set up a five-step st- five step system. Mm-hmm. Five-step system. I applied here. It was very successful. And more and more kids, just because of word of mouth, mm-hmm. mouth they came here. Right. So and I that's the best kind of advertisement. Yeah, yeah I, I, I don't have places already, full house. Mm-hmm. And I cannot extend here because already um, I used up all the area. How many students did you have when you first started? I, when I first started, I didn't have any students, only mm-hmm. my kids. Your kids, yeah. Then, then some people just go back and forth here, uh-huh. then join here and get see the results uh-huh. and talk to another kids. And, and, and they come here more and more and more and more and more and then they closed in rolling authority. And when them. your child became the, the youngest to you know yeah. to, to it was also the boost booster for, for the business because he became just one overnight he became the famous in So Singapore. he was in the newspapers and, yes. and everything. Several newspapers wrote about him. Is that record in Singapore or the world over? Uh, Singapore record because in Singapore. there was one more kid who uh, uh, passed uh, IGCC at the age of 9.2. Okay. And my son is 9.11. Ah, I see, I <laughs> Not see. Not the record. <laughs> now, and this exam that you're talking about, what age um, does do students usually take it at? What age are they usually when they take this examination? Uh, usually 17. 17? Wow, 17. so that's really yeah, a Normally in our, in our school day schools, international school now, the kids finish school at, at uh, 12, 13. 13 mm-hmm. It's enough to, to finish all school syllabus with the right approach. Mm. Have you had him tested for giftedness? Do you think that is something that's no, in no, no. For, for Yes, my, my elder, elder son, yes, uh, a little bit gifted. Mm-hmm. But, uh, Not the one that made the, world record, the Singapore record. <laughs> yeah, this one, this, his one. He, he, elder son. Uh-huh. And, uh, uh, but uh, the ch- every child with average intellectual ability uh, can finish school at 13 with the right approach because in, in most school they just waste time. That's a problem. A lot of unnecessary activities 
and very strange uh, the teaching process. He, they learn some subject, some uh, some subject, some topic in January, another topic in February, another topic in March, and by the end of the year they forgot what they learned in January so and started yeah. over again. So we don't this this uh, unproductive. Mm -hmm. So I created a new system, mm -hmm. uh, five step system. We cover we take a big chunk of syllabus and go through the. Uh, on the simple level, mm -hmm. so just uh, concepts and simple formulas. Then next level, we use we immerse this concept into very simple texts, text question, then multi-step questions, and uh, in, um, uh, the questions which, which involve several different topics. Mm -hmm. Then next level is research. So for younger kids, also they can do research. They mm -hmm. can do it as a show and count the. For example, the number of uh, items which price has below three dollars, for example, or something like this. So you believe that uh, g given the right teaching method, that every child can finish school at age thirteen? Did I hear right? In because small classes, yes. Eight eight uh, students per class. This is mm. very important. Even Jesus Christ had twelve. <laughs> so it's impossible for human being to to teach more than twelve, uh, more than eight actually. But in class of eight. Uh, the kids can enjoy the dialogue. That's mm -hmm. very important. Because no dialogue, they it's very difficult to 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 get them involved in the process, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of noisy, especially in, if you so imagine 40, 40 students, primary one student right. in the class. <laughs> right. <laughs> difficult. The teacher complained to me because I know local teachers. Mm -hmm. complained to say, Alex, can I spend 90% of my efforts and time just to make them sit management, qu class qu management. Qu quietly, sitting quietly, right. not just manage, just sit quietly <laughs> because cannot focus them. Mm. But our kids, each one had to follow his own learning plan. It's mm -hmm. very important. But still, other, other kids support, still a group. They support the club. When they reach milestone, they stand in club. And they, uh, the the kids are very proud, mm -hmm. and this this support this this scholarly environment. So how do you group your, your your students? I mean, obviously you have different age groups coming in, different abilities. How do you group them into these classes? Uh, still, we group by age, because if it's, if students twelve years old, we have different group dynamic, mm -hmm. so we use different approaches. But uh, from five to eight can sit in one. They can mm -hmm. sit in one room. Mm -hmm. Is that the youngest that you take five years old? Uh, normally five, but we have one student four years old. Mm -hmm. So it depends on the yeah, individual child. Still, yeah, because some students at four can sit and, and do right. their work. Some uh -huh. students at twelve cannot. <laughs> I agree. I, I agree with that. Yeah. So run me through a typical day at your school. I mean, from the time a, a child walks into here, what what kind of curriculum does he go through? Or For younger kids, oh, three languages and one math, that's all. Okay. And uh, they study for 40 minutes, then 20 minutes break, and again, so that's why 40 plus 20, one hour, mm -hmm. one hour, one hour, one hour. Mm -hmm. Then after fourth lesson, we have CCA activities. Now you mentioned three languages? Yes. Three languages. What are the languages that, that's being taught? Russian. Russian and? Yeah. English, English and Chinese. English and Chinese. Yeah. Other students, uh, some younger kids, very outstanding. They want to learn science at seven years old. Mm -hmm. No problem. We can adjust the syllabus for for them uh, because it's individualized approach school. So we can create any syllabus. Some kids are interested in music. For example, uh, one of my kids, he was very interested in 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 in, in studying music, the piano. Mm -hmm. So we increase the number of uh, hours for this for, for him. So we just try to capture the use, the surge of motivation. Mm -hmm. uh, the inner motivation, yeah, yeah. The, the inner desire to learn. Yeah. Yeah. In big class, you cannot do this, but we can we can adjust. For example, the child says, "Oh, I, I like I, I like biology. I want to study biology now." So on this top of the, his motivation, he can read the whole level book in two weeks. Wow! <laughs> so the other kids were dragging, mm -hmm. reading this the, for the whole year. Mm -hmm. So then he switched to some other subjects very interesting for him. He also stretch this this subject in our syllabus. Mm -hmm. Mm, so for so the young guys, they come in, they do one math and they do um, three three languages. Oh. And then you mentioned CCA. What's in a CCA program? Uh, music, arts. Uh, we have karate lesson, 
Karate. Yeah, oh. and even girls study this. And uh, um, you know, coding and chess. Coding. And chess. So music, how deeply do you get into it? I mean, is it, do, do you introduce any instruments? Or? Yeah, mo normally piano. Normally piano. So, so, mm -hmm. so the, the teacher show how to play. But mm -hmm. in a very small group of show one by one, they mm -hmm. learn how to read notes. Mm -hmm. They uh, learn how to listen to music mm -hmm. different composers. So that's how. So um, you and your wife, they're from Russia. Where are your other teachers from? Are they local or are they? A local, we have a teacher from all, all different countries. We have English, English lessons uh, conducted by American teacher. Mm -hmm. So natives, native speaker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chinese lessons by Chinese teacher. Mm -hmm. I see, how. I see. So um, coding, you mentioned coding. Yeah. At what age do you start teaching them coding? At what age? It's Five. At five, but uh, we approach the coding uh, from the point of algorithmic, algorithmic thinking. Mm. So, because uh, if you know algorithms, it doesn't matter which which language you use. If you master one language, you can use all other language very fast. So that's sort of like mastering Latin, and then you can understand the Latin based uh, language a little bit. This is exaggeration, but for okay. coding, it's true. Because if you know one second language is already half time, third language already ten percent of the time learning uh, first language. Mm -hmm. So algorithmic thinking, we use uh, applications for kids very funny. So they can use procedures, loops, and all this stuff. Wow. And then and then we use uh, um, if the child is very advanced, we start learning real language. If not advanced, we use Scratch. You know Scratch. Like blocks, right. okay. We use Arduino, you know Arduino. Mm. It's a special uh, kit uh, with uh, with electrical parts. Mm. We can we can create the uh, chains, electrical chains. Measure, for example, you can uh, create yourself, and a child can use itself like a, a device with to, to measure the distance from your hand. And you can do robots. It's like robots. Oh, that's amazing! Yeah. yeah. Well, my daughter did a coding class last week. She really enjoyed it. They use a little um, wooden robot, Cubetto. Have you heard yes, of that? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So she she yeah, enjoyed it. And that. also uh, uh, Lego robots. So, but the real coding starts when they start learning languages, and it depends upon child. But it kills kills motivation. Very dangerous zone. If you see the child can endure this tough uh, work. We continue. If not, we switch back to something, some fun. Because it's always our, the best thing is to to keep the motivation and to teach the a kid uh, uh, self learning techniques. Mm -hmm. If you have this too, you don't need teachers. If you know how to teach yourself, if you have motivation, you don't need anyone. Only maybe expert who can answer a very difficult part. I, I agree with that because yeah. I, I have always thought that um, a teacher is the best teacher is one whose class will run itself even yeah. if he's just standing quiet at the back of the classroom because the kids know how, how the con lesson is conducted. Right? The one who encourage. Mm. Encouragement is everything. Encouragement is a, is a tool to, to is a way to support motivation and uh, the best teacher always find the, the, the time and the, the best moments to put some phrases that encourage their motivation. So mm -hmm. you're great, all the nice, good work, all this mm -hmm. stuff. And not just to listen to me, I will show you how to solve this question. Because nobody cares why this question, why I need this question. <laughs> when do I get out of school? <laughs> now, I know none of your kids go to local schools, uh, but what are your impression of local schools? I know they produce great results, but do you find them to be somewhat stifling? You know why the number one reason we came to Singapore? No, maybe, maybe number two reason after safety. Safety, yeah. It was a we want to be in the local school, but after some months I studied closer. I found one mm, disadvantage, and the, this disadvantage covered all the advantages. It's big classes. Mm. Primary one student class, forty-five about students. About forty, yeah, forty, forty-five. Yeah. Impossible to teach. Mm. So that's why I refuse this because I believe strong belief in in personal uh, bonds between teacher and student mm -hmm. and the dialogue. So you answer my the question, mm -hmm. I reply. So uh, why you think so? So it's interaction yeah, and, and it's feedback. Right. It should be conversation. Right. You, uh, the, you know, you know Nietzsche, Nietzsche, the German. Philosophy. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. He told, when you are looking for a wife, 
uh, take a, a look for friend uh, for good conversation uh -huh. to make good conversation uh -huh. if you have a good conversation you become friends so the same is a student we uh, if the the good teacher is a personality mm -hmm. it's not just a, a, a sack of just knowledge just an element <laughs> right so the best teacher is a personality who influences students by himself mm. if you're reading a book as a father or as a teacher your kids or your students also will be reading love reading if you call yourself they also you like calling if they like you mm -hmm. but they model to make them you. like you you need to you need to be a person who see who encourages them and who see uh, the who see the personality in them mm. inside them you see the potential inside them and they will feel this mm. if they feel this they make they, he will love or she will love you and she will follow you mm. that's a secret now um, I understand that you also authored some books yes on parenting on parenting yeah. uh, actually in Russia I was a host of talk show on parenting oh. so very famous oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. so still I continue my research on this Wow, and um, is this book available in, as an e-book or is it a physical? E-book and physical book already. And it's available in English, on, in, on, on in, in English now on Amazon. You can buy 100 parenting tips, and uh, in one month will be in Chinese also. Wow. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Alex. Thanks for spending time with us today. Uh, that's just amazing. Um, thank you. My thank pleasure. you very much.